welcome to Would I Lie to You, the show that separates the truth from the twaddle. On David Mitchell's team tonight, an actor who recently hosted Channel 4's Fake News, a panel show all about lying. It'll never work. It's Stephen Mangan. <laughs> and an actress whose award-winning stage and screen work spans an incredible 60 years. I'm so sorry it's come to this. It's Sheila Hancock. <laughs> And on uh, Lee Mack's team tonight, she's a roving reporter for The One Show, where her hard-hitting reports saw her visit all 19 of Britain's pencil museums. It's Anita Rani. <laughs> and the star of Catastrophe, Line of Duty and Shetland, it's Mark Bonner. <laughs> we begin, as always, with round one, Home Truths, where our panellists each read out a statement from the card in front of them. Now, to make things harder, they've never seen the card before, they've no idea what they'll be faced with. It's up to the opposing team to sort the fact from the fiction. Sheila, you're first up tonight. Oh! I keep a spare front door key on my cat's collar. If I ever get locked out, I simply call my cat and he comes to my rescue. <laughs> Please do. Wow. What's the name of your cat, Sheila? Stanley. Could you do the call? How do you call Stanley? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's chicken. Surely, surely Hello. that's how he calls that's you. Stanley's... I was confusing because when he wanted to come in, I didn't have a cat flap, and I would r do the intercom and say, "Are you there, Stanley?" And he'd go, "Meow." <laughs> so you haven't got a cat flap? I haven't got a cat flap. No. You haven't got a cat flap, and. The spur key is round his neck. Yeah. What happens if you come and he's in the house? He doesn't have them on when he's in the house. Oh, he takes them off, does he, when he comes in? <laughs> I take them does off. Does he take it off and hide it under the brick for you? <laughs> I take them off when it's in the house, cos it jingles. So do you put him out every time you leave the house? Yes, I do. You do? Are you not worried about burglars? Like, mm. seeing the key around your cat's neck and then using him like a key ring and just... <laughs> <laughs> He's... This key's not working! <laughs> <laughs> no, it's in a metal case. It looks almost like a whistle or something. Oh, and I see. And you just pull it out and then inside there's a Does key. Does he also oh. wear one of those medallions with his address on it? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's got a chip. He's, he's got, got a chip, chip inside hey. him. Oh, he yes, doesn't need, yes. He doesn't need anyone to bring him home with his address cos he can just come and go as he pleases with the key. <laughs> When was the last time you had to use this hmm. method? About a fortnight ago. What yeah. happened? I'd forgot my key. I what left it inside. <laughs> it was late at night and I'd just come back from the theatre. It was about 11 o'clock. Oh, what had you seen? Just say cats. What you seen? <laughs> <laughs> I'd seen um, Jess Butterworth's new play. Can I just ask why you don't mortis lock your door? M modest? There's a mortis? Mortis. <laughs> In my defence, my friend is saying, I'm Mary, you're a gym, might you still lock the door? <laughs> you need to put a chin in the middle of the day, idea, don't bring your cat's down. I don't know what a mortise lock is. Well, it's not the big lock. Uh, you, you unlock the big lock and then you lock the... You unlock your well, heel. No, he wouldn't be able to have a big key round his neck. <laughs> you obviously aren't that security conscious if you've only got a Yale lock I've only at all got times. a Yale lock. I think if, if Sheila was that security conscious, she wouldn't tie her key to her cat. <laughs> <laughs> so, two weeks ago, you went to the theatre and you got back at sort of half ten at night, eleven o'clock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What time did you get back from the theatre usually? About eleven? About eleven, yeah. Just making a note of this, I'm going to rob you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, what are you going to say? Lie. I think it's a lie. Lie. Yeah. I'm going with Mark. Lie. I think she's too sensible to do this, Sheila. OK. Yeah. You're saying it's a lie, Sheila. Truth or lie? Well, it is a lie. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's a lie. Sheila doesn't keep a spare front door key on her cat's collar. Anita, you're next. OK. The day I moved into my new house, I caused the whole street to be shut down and my neighbours' homes to be evacuated. David, how did you cause that? Um, because we thought we'd found a grenade in the house. You, you thought you'd found a grenade? <laughs> yes. Where we did you think you'd found a grenade? Please don't tell me it's round the cat's neck. <laughs> <laughs> it was our first day in our new house and we were cleaning in the kitchen. Where did you find the grenade? 
on top of the cabinet. So it was kind of, so it was um, a old, really old kitchen with low cabinets. Yeah. And we thought we'd found a grenade. What did the grenade look like? A grenade? No, or what? <laughs> Describe it. Um, well, it was my husband that saw it first, mm. and he climbed up, came down the stepladder very quickly and said, I think it's a grenade. What's, what, you, what you've done there is not a description of a grenade. <laughs> so then I went to have a look yes. and quickly came back down and said, yeah, it looks like a grenade. And what did the, it look like? OK, the only... It, what, it's what I imagine a grenade would look like. <laughs> and and that will do. Cos I've never uh, seen one. My client does not want to answer any more questions. Uh, <laughs> because I've never seen one in real life before. And then what did you do? We, we called the police, so the police woman came round to our house and she did the same thing. She went up the stepladder, looked on top of the cabinet and said, I think it's a grenade, better call Sarge. So she phoned back... What is back. that? Sergeant. Oh, sorry, you know, I Sarge, thought you meant... Sarge. I thought, <laughs> I thought Sarge sounds like a thing like Spectre, doesn't yeah, Cobra? Yeah, yeah. 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 Cobra, yeah. yeah. Cobra. Yeah. You thought it was an oh. acronym? Yes. I thought... Yes, well, well Do, done. Can I just... Special... <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't expect that, so, so, so <laughs> credit where it's due. Did anybody ask whether the pin was still in the grenade? So at this stage, we're still trying to find out what it is. So the has police woman has come yet. So <laughs> Sarge, <laughs> is that an acronym? No, it's not an acronym. It's a, it's a shortening of sergeant. So then Sarge has turned. Thank goodness up. they didn't call for the constable. <laughs> Sergeant's there. He walks in, does the same thing, up the stepladder, looks and goes, OK, think, think it might be a grenade. We're I'll in have our... to call the inspector. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> then, seven hours later, the Prime Minister comes. <laughs> Nearly. At this point, he thinks, I think it might be a grenade, so he actually phones the bomb squad. So the uh, bomb squad, really nice chap, walks into the kitchen, he walks up the stepladder, Looked at it, picked it up, I went, it's a lighter. <laughs> so... He took the risk of going... Yeah. Oh. Because <laughs> they, they are the only people, let's be fair... Yeah. He no turned round with his burnt face and went, <laughs> finally, what that is a lighter? <laughs> <sighs> They're the only... This time lucky! <laughs> That's why they do their job, because they know what a real grenade is and what yeah. a fake one is. So, um, what, what are you thinking? Is it the truth? <laughs> What do you think, Sheila? I, I'm, I'm puzzled by this one. Um, <laughs> there was a hesitation right at the very beginning while she tried to think up a story, I thought. I think it's true because I like the detail of the policemen going out one by one and looking at it and thinking, oh, I'm not sure about this, I'd better get someone. And it makes a lot of sense to me that people would pass the buck down the line. I think it's true. Right. True lie, true lie. Ah, uh, lie. Anita, was it the truth or was it a lie? It was. True! Yeah. 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 Okay. Yes, it's true. Our next round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. Now, this week, each of David's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest, and it's up to Lee's team to spot who's telling the truth. So, please welcome this week's special guest, John. <laughs> Sheila, what is John to you? Well, this is John, and he disrupted a show I was in with an explosive attack of the hiccups. <laughs> uh, Stephen, how do you know John? Uh, this is John. We once spent an hour hiding from a piece of rope because we thought it was a snake. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, David, what's your relationship with John? Uh, th this is John. I was the only person to attend his neighbourhood watch meeting. <laughs> so we spent ten minutes drawing a map of the road, then gave up and watched an episode of Knight Rider. <laughs> <laughs> so there we have it. Uh, Lee's team, where to begin? Shall we start with Sheila? Yeah. Uh, what was the show? It was a, a musical uh, called Grey Gardens, which I did last year at Southwark Playhouse. It's a fringe theatre, so the audience are right on top of you and you can hear everything. And at the beginning, I could hear this person sort of suppressing something. <clears throat> like that. 
And then there was a really quiet moment and he had the most terrible attack of hiccup. <laughs> It was just like as though he was choking almost. So eventually, well, so, I... sorry. Eventually, you thought he was choking, and you did something. <laughs> eventually, no. It's, I knew he wasn't choking, How but he was he making choking? a choky type noise. Oh, okay, all right. So I had a glass that was supposed to be whiskey, but was actually water. So I went over to him, and I made him drink out the back of the glass, and the audience were applauding like mad. What was your character? I was playing this old lady, and it's the story of these two women. They were discovered surrounded by cats and well, animals. They were probably locked out. Stanley. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious as to how long it was before you stopped the show. I mean, well, it, it, I let it go on for about two, three and minutes. What were you oh. doing at the time? What I was, was singing. What, I you was were trying in the to of a, sing. You were in the middle of a song? Yes. What was the song, Sheila? So, I, I love you, I love you. It's a song that she sings to her daughter. It's a very poignant moment. Um, but you can't do a poignant moment with someone going... Oh! No, I'm kind of oh! surprised... To be honest, I'm kind of surprised that John didn't take it upon himself yeah. to leave the theatre. He was embarrassed, poor darling. He's stuck in this show. So you thought you'll help him with his embarrassment? I sort of by did. Making <laughs> him, by making him drink upside down with a glass of water? No, I knew the audience were getting really aggressive with him. As what were they, they doing? Well, but you they said were they're going, getting shush, 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 like that to it. But they must so have known that it's an involuntary action and he's not doing no, it deliberately. No, but audiences are like that. If they're in a lovely moment, they were enjoying the show and suddenly this idiot's going... <laughs> 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 And he's going... Are you sure it wasn't like the house version of the song? Maybe it's a bit more garish. Is that what you think house music sounds like? And I quote... I would say, of all the genres of music, although house isn't close, it's the closest. Unless you can tell me what that is closer than. I would say it's a very experimental, avant-garde, <laughs> East Philip Berlin Glass. in the early 30s. <laughs> I certainly wouldn't call it that... house music in a desperate so attempt the... to get down with the kids. <laughs> I don't think 1930s East, East German is actually a genre of music. I'm um, saying... You give me a decade and a country. Yeah, in fact, <laughs> you've also given a country that didn't exist in the decade you've given. <laughs> well spotted. Well spotted. But you noticed that Lee Both didn't spot it. <laughs> right. Who would you like to quiz next? We'll go with we'll go with Stephen, shall we? Just remind us, Stephen, just to refresh our memories. This is John. We once spent an hour hiding from a piece of rope because we thought it was a snake. Right. Where where were you? We were in California. Right. Oh, and yeah. how do you know this gentleman? Uh, I'm related to him. In what what how? But how? Well, some of our relatives are, were, you know... <laughs> <laughs> we're cousins. You're cousins? Yeah. OK, so you're in California. Yeah. And what are you, camping, are you? We're camping. What age were you? I was nine... Nine? Teen. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Who was camping? We were. Just the two Just of the two of you. Just the two of us, yeah. And Yellowstone? No, no, no. Yosemite? No. Big huh? Sur? No. Doesn't matter what type of snake it was. <laughs> Who spotted it first? We're in a tent, <laughs> and I wake up, and it's we're in the woods, and it's California. Are you not a campsite then? You're just going not wild. Not on the campsite, no. Okay. And I see a snake on the roof of the tent. So you saw you saw the out the shadow. We the saw silhouette. the shadow of a snake. So I say to him, I think there's a snake. He says, I think there is. Yeah. But it wasn't moving. But we watched it. We thought maybe it was asleep. How long did you watch it for? For about 40 minutes. Right. And you were too scared to, like, try and sneak out the front way and run? Mm. Well, we did come up with a plan. Oh, OK. Which was one of us was going to hit it and knock it away from the tent. Yeah. And then it would fly away and then we'd dash out the hit tent. Hit it with your bare hand? I think it was a pillow, actually. You took pillows camping? Glamping. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you? <laughs> so one of us hit it... Yeah, with a pillow. ..and the snake flew up in the air and then landed right back down on top of the tent. <laughs> when it's settled and it's yeah. still again, yeah. you now know it's definitely not a live snake. No, we think it may have been stunned. <laughs> <laughs> which, one of you, which one of you hit it? I'd be, I'd be lying if I said I remembered. Probably John. Who probably did it. John. <laughs> <laughs> probably <laughs> John. I mean, well, it's, it's, not easy. it's not easy to remember blood relatives, is it? <laughs> 
So what happens next? We decided one of us had to dash out of the tent yeah. and then see what the situation was. <laughs> and who's, and who did and that? I, and John very bravely <laughs> said he would do it. <laughs> so quietly we got out of our sleeping bags uh -huh. and to get him a quick exit, I helped open the flap and he jumped out. <laughs> and then he turned around and he went, you won't believe this, <laughs> it's a rope. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Mark, you, you seem to find a potentially life-threatening situation <laughs> rather amusing. <laughs> where, where did this... <laughs> Can I ask Stephen, where did this rope come from? <laughs> it was on the tent. It was just a rope on the tent. Ropes on tents are really thin. They're not like... Very not, thin They've not got snake. the girth of a snake. Maybe. It wasn't a snake like that. No, no, it was a piece of rope <laughs> like that. <laughs> How could you think that the most you can figure out is a worm? Yeah, but also you've got to remember. <laughs> There's a worm! Quick, get my pillow! <laughs> it's also early morning, so the sun is oh, just yeah, coming up, casting Snakes a long shadow. Snakes are in the morning, aren't they? <laughs> it was early morning. It'll be they fatten up during the day. <laughs> That's a little thin bit of rope. That's nothing like oh. a snake. Unless you'd have said the shadow had somehow made it That's look. That's what bigger. I'm saying. It's early you didn't morning. Say that. Early morning. It's early morning. The sun is low. I said that. He did say and that. He did look. I don't. I mean, sometimes you know. Lee doesn't totally listen to everything other people <laughs> say. It is true. That is a fair point. Okay, oh. now oh what about God. David? <laughs> David. So <laughs> remind us again, David. <laughs> um, Oh, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I went... I was the only person to turn up at mm. John's Neighbourhood Watch meeting oh, yeah. and then gave up and watched a, an episode of Knight Rider. How well do you know your neighbour? Oh, not, not very well, a, a, a bit. There'd been little um, a sort of photocopied note had gone round about this meeting. A photocopied note? <laughs> it's email these days. Yeah, but how do you know each other's emails on the, before you start Neighbourhood Watch? Well, they've not. They've started. The party's in it. No, but this is before this. This is the first meeting. Yeah, isn't it? it's the first meeting. Oh, I do apologise. Sorry, yeah. carry Some... on. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I must apologise about Rob. Sometimes yeah. he doesn't listen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um... <laughs> uh, and anyway, so between me and my wife, we decide that one of us should go, <laughs> and we thought that it, you know, um... <laughs> and she thought. She it should be you. Be you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it turned out I thought that too. <laughs> and, uh, I... and, the, and it started off by drawing... You were drawing a map. And then... Well, map of yeah, the well, then... Why were you drawing, Why were you drawing a map of the street? Of the street? Uh, just, just to, because John wanted to explain what the area he thought the neighbourhood... This neighbourhood watch uh, group should cover. How many houses away do you live? Uh, from him? F uh, um, uh, He's, uh, I think, next door but four. Next door but four. So <laughs> let's say five houses away. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's a very weird way to describe. <laughs> next door I've never heard anyone four. say... He's, he's... <laughs> he lives next door but four. It just somehow doesn't work. Next door but one is the limit to how much you can use. <laughs> so I just keep adding numbers up. I'm going for it. I'm going for it. I'm going next door yeah. but 40,000. <laughs> that's, that's where the Queen lives. <laughs> Was, uh, was Knight Rider on telly or did he have it on a DVD? He had it on a DVD. So, I'm a massive fan of Knight Rider. I've got all, all of them. Which one was this? Uh, which, which what? Which episode? You know what? what you understand the question. I don't remember the title of the episode. No, but what happened, what happened in the episode? In the episode? In the episode? I'd be interested yeah. to hear this. Uh, Michael Knight... Settle down, because this will be very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> he's driving along... Michael Knight, that's I... a good start, Michael yeah, yeah, Knight. Yeah, as yeah, I so... remember, he's driving along and he... in kit. Right. And he's driving absolutely on the speed limit. But not <laughs> above the speed Even limit. Even in your but... anecdotes, health and safety <laughs> is important. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's important to the plot. Yes. He's driving it and it says on the... on... Kit's digital dial, 55 miles an hour, which is the speed limit in, uh. in America. <laughs> and the police pull him over. <laughs> it turns out that, that he is driving over the speed limit, but there's something wrong with Kit, is yeah. all askew. Oh. Yeah. Hang on, I'm just trying to remember the episode of Knight Rider where the story was about the speedometer being slightly broken. <laughs> <laughs> That's a coincidence, cos I'm trying to do the same thing. <laughs> All right. Wow. We need an answer. So, Lee's team. Is John Sheila's helpless hiccuper, Stephen's cowardly companion, or David's night-riding neighbour? What do you think, Mark? Uh, I, uh, the, the, it seems to me you can drive a bus through the holes in uh, all three of them. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen's snake... He, he had me until the pillow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
I just don't think David, even though he's a really nice man, I just don't think he'd have the uh, patience. I'll have to pull you up on that. <laughs> Anyone else would just be like, why don't we just go down the pub, mate? No, or, not David. Not David, not no. David. David's never ended a sentence with mate. Mate, OK, fine. <laughs> fair, fair enough. Except oh, when playing chess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even for you, David, that was quite middle class. Yeah, <laughs> fair enough, you've won, mate. <laughs> and what about Sheila? The fringe theatre with the hiccups. If I had the hiccups for two or three minutes, I would leave. Yeah. It's very difficult in those sort of theatres to get out. Yeah. They were trapped. They were trapped. Right, well, but got... that's a fire and oh. safety nightmare. I'm just trying to... <laughs> <laughs> right, who's it going to be? I think it's Sheila. What uh, do you uh, think uh, uh, David. Do you think yeah. it's David? I, mean, oh, I think it's Stephen. <laughs> oh, it's... <laughs> Lee Mack, make a decision. Be a captain. Right. My decision yeah. is definite and it's clear and I'm not going back on it. Anita, you are deciding. Oh, God. <laughs> I originally thought Sheila, but I'm going to go with Stephen. You're going to go with Stephen. Yeah. Stephen. What, what are you, you doing, Mark? Stephen. 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 We're going to say You're Stephen. You're saying it's Stephen. <laughs> I don't know why. John, would you please reveal your true identity? I, I'm John, and Stephen and I hid from a piece of rope. Yes, John is Stephen's cowardly companion. Thank you very much, John. Which brings us to our final round, Pit Fire Lies, and we start with... It's Lee. Oh. It says possession. Right. Under the desk is a box. If you uh, bring the box onto the desk. Now, read the card first and then show us the possession. I recently took a crash course in taxidermy, <laughs> by the end of which I've managed to make this. <laughs> okay. Show us what this is. Pop it onto the chair. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, David's team, where would you like to begin? What is it? I can't can see. We have it. A, can we have a proper oh, look? That, Sheila, is what I call <laughs> mouse on a skateboard. <laughs> You it's like me to mouse, take it across? It? Please do. What's it made of? <laughs> made of mouse. <laughs> <laughs> With a little bit of skateboard. Oh, no! <laughs> oh, How was he killed? He looks like he was... <laughs> I should point out that he wasn't killed. He was found dead naturally. It's no like one... he was found walking down a very <laughs> small alley. <laughs> <laughs> Careful, took ages. Oh. OK, first of all, how long was this course? Uh, this is the first course. <laughs> um, <laughs> The course, uh, the course is uh, well. It, it takes place over about sixteen uh, weeks, so four four months. A crash course. That's... <laughs> taxidermy, taxidermy takes years to perfect. This is a cra crash. And, and how often did you go? It happens every week. Once a week for sixteen <laughs> weeks. That's not a crash course. It that's is. an evening class. No, not in, <laughs> not in relation to the, the, the proper course to become a professional taxidermist. Well, that, that, that goes on for 25 years. years and you meet once every six months? That takes, that takes four years or until the animal dies. Can you...? <laughs> <laughs> How did you do that mouse? Uh, basically, we've, uh, I found a, a mouse. Where? It, it, uh, there, on the stair. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Clubs on. Uh, <laughs> um, I found the mouse uh, actually uh, in the cage which it was kept in because it was my child's pet. And it was but... skateboarding. No, it wasn't skateboarding. <laughs> my son was a skateboarder and that's why he wanted the mouse on the skateboard. What did you do with the mouse that you found? Well, uh, for the first thing I did was uh, I had to break the news to my son and I said, uh, your mouse is dead. <laughs> so that was that covered. He said, oh, I don't, want to, I don't want to lose him forever. And I said, in that case, it's the crash course at the taxi <laughs> <laughs> So, wait a minute, okay. the mouse dies. Correct. You have a conversation with your son. What are we going to do? Let's stuff him. I know, I'll learn. I won't get a professional Correct. animal stuffer. And that's because... <laughs> I'll learn to do it. You ring up the course. It's like there happens to be a 16-week course no. <laughs> starting next week. How many people 
were on the course? I would say there was 12, 14, something like that. 12. 12. There was 12. 12. 12, 12 yes. Yeah, sorry, no, it was a, a disciples convention. Talk, talk me the... through them. What sort of people were they? It was Matthew, Mark, Luke. I'm oh, sorry, <laughs> uh, there, was, uh, there was a guy called Thomas. He wasn't sure if you wanted to be there. Um, <laughs> What you do. Um, first, the first thing you've got to do is always check that the mouse is actually dead. <laughs> so, sorry, it's always a, it's always always a mouse. <laughs> this <laughs> course is just for mouse stuffers. <laughs> no, no, one, no one had anything else they were to do. So, everyone, they all 12 of you turn it up, sit down, get your mouse out. <laughs> <laughs> first, <laughs> You've got to remember that it's an introductory course. There was one guy, so just one guy, Brian. They're a good entry. Turned levels. up with his giraffe. <laughs> he turned up with and you went, you, you want the advanced course, mate, because we can't do this in 16 weeks. <laughs> Next door, the, the one that's got the, uh, you know, the, the Velux windows. <laughs> well, you can only stuff a giraffe if you've got Velux windows. That's the first thing you learn. <laughs> What do you do, scoop the inside Thank out? Thank you. Is someone finally interested in the art form? <laughs> First thing you've got to do is get rid of the inside of the mouse. Uh, Ow. How do you do that? Ow. Good question, Sheila. <laughs> you get a, a, a sharp blade and you make a, a, an incision from the back of the skull all the way down to the tail. So what happens when you make that when you make that incision down the down the spine? Down the spine, yeah. What happens? So there's, that, now I'm looking. Can it be described as a very very horrific pop up book? <laughs> because <laughs> I opened it up <laughs> and it's not a pretty sight. I would describe it, <laughs> would describe it as sort of mouse spine like. <laughs> and it, I went, oh, like and the, and the fella said, first rule of stuff, get stuffed, taxidermy, crash course. <laughs> he said, this is the interesting bit, he went, it's never, ever open them from the back. <laughs> right. I learned a lesson. I learned a lesson. You've got to learn, haven't you? You've got to learn. You've got to learn. So what did you do? Well, it means you got me needle and thread. So you stitch the I mouse back stitch up. stitch the mouse back up, right. get him back to how he was. Right. <laughs> Turn him over. Yeah. <laughs> Down the middle. And then what did you do? You have to effectively, there's no there's no easy way of saying it. I had to scrape out his insides. With you, what? With the with the tools. The tools that they give you. <laughs> what sort of tool is it? Well, there's many, many tools. You know those weird things you get when you're trying to get the last bit of lobster out of the claw? Then it's like a little fork. It's got it little... wouldn't work with a giraffe, though. Oh would no, it? a giraffe. You just... <laughs> All you need for a giraffe is a spade and loads of bamboo. <laughs> OK, so you scoop yeah. out... We, know, we learned that on day four. <laughs> what do you put back in to give him that healthy...? You build individual fragments of bone shapes but out of metal and glue them all together. It takes, ooh, 15 weeks on a Thursday night. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, David? It, 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 it sounds very plausible to me, but what is your team? <laughs> Sheila, what do you think? No, I think it's you a lie. You think it's a lie? I can't, I can't see why anyone wouldn't believe that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I don't think there's any level on which any of us <laughs> believe that. Um, you're lie. saying it's a lie. Lee, yeah. is it the truth or is it a lie? Oh, I actually have to go through the thing of pressing the button. <laughs> <laughs> lie. <laughs> Well, that noise signals time is up. It's the end of the show, and I can reveal that Lee's team have won by three points to one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Good night.